Hey everyone, this is Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. Today I want to show you how to put in a backup camera for a 2000 Toyota 4Runner. Now I'm showing you a 10mm and I'll be using a flathead, a panel removal tool, and a Phillips screwdriver. And so I took out the 10mm bolt for the outside panel and then I just used the panel removal tool around the edges to take the rest of it out. Now this black panel, metal panel, will come out. Just take the bolts out from around it. And then you can see there's three electrical connectors. They just disconnect each one of those and then that whole panel will come off. So you just push in the tabs on each one of these and you can separate them. And it's a lot easier with two hands. And then this is the inside of your hatchback or your lift gate whatever you want to call it and then there is one nut or two nuts yours may be different but you take that out and then your plastic surround by your license plate will come out or lift up now you don't want to remove it all the way just lift it up so you can get the wiring through for your license plate holder or your rear view camera. Now this is the wiring this is the RCA wiring for your video and then your trigger wire and your ground wire are on one side the tail side and the one that goes by your stereo is your trigger wire and your RCA cable. So you can see I've got some fish tape there and that's just to go through that side channel by your rear window and you just open that little rubber grommet pull that out and then your fish tape should just slide through there and what you're pulling through is the RCA cable and your trigger wire that you want to have go to your reverse light or your tail light so this is the inside of the lift gate and you can see I've got it all zip tied up. The ground wire is connected right there. And then I had to splice in that white wire to the trigger wire because it wasn't long enough to fit through this side of the window there. And so what I have coming out is the RCA cable and the trigger wire. And then you can see I got a bunch of wire loom So that, you just open up your back panel on the driver's side there. And then you can take off your tail light with the two 10 millimeter nuts. And you've got that tab, so you wanna just pull that out to your left as you're looking at it from behind. And so the top socket is your reverse light or your lamp in there. And you want to connect your trigger wire to the positive side of that, which in this application is your red and your blue wire. Your red with the blue stripe. And you can see how it goes through there. And there's a rubber grommet down by the wiring harness. And you can just push through that with a screwdriver or a drill bit, you know, whatever you might have to get through there, to get your wire through. And so it's the top bulb. So 
So once you're all spliced in there, you can go ahead and put all that stuff back in the back end there. And then I decided to go through the headliner to get the wiring through. Oh, and there's Pebbles with her holiday antlers on. Reindeer antlers. Looking very festive. She's about eight or nine months right now. Just an awesome dog. Great dog. And back to the project. Now I got that cable about halfway, or a little over halfway, to the driver's side door. Right above the window there. And so I just pulled down on the panel where the headliner's at and just make sure I'm not hitting anything when I push the panel back up. And then for your I-beam right there where the handle is at, there are two bolts going into the metal and so they just have plastic covers over them. So I just take those, pop those plastic covers off with the flathead. Now the top one, now both of these are Phillips ends or Phillip heads, screwdriver heads. And then the top one would not come off. It was just sealed in there. So what I ended up doing was breaking off the uh, square washer. And then I ended up putting a, a new just a regular washer in there. But once I got that off, you can see there's a bunch of clips back there. And you'll just want to run your feed your wire through there. And just be careful not to hit the clips when you push it all back together. And so this was actually a two day project. The first day I got the wiring uh, from the back of the vehicle up to the stereo. And then the next day, I wired all the wiring into the stereo. So you can see I'm just taking apart some of the plastic surround or plastic moldings there. And just lift those up, and they'll just come up with your hands. So the one that goes around the air conditioning controls and the radio, that just pulls back. So once those are off, you may or may not want to disconnect some of the wiring. So you can just push it off to the side if you have enough room in there. Now what I ended up doing is just setting the parking brake. Turning the key a little bit, not to drive but just accessories and you go ahead and move your gear selector and that way you can get to all the screws for the stereo or you can move your panel out of the way too if you want to do that so once you get your screws out uh, there's two on each side you want to look for your trigger wire for your backup camera and it'll say like reverse backup or reverse wire and in this application see there's the wiring from the front and that red goes to the trigger wire and then the yellow goes into your RCA 
connector on the back of your stereo for your backup camera video. And so that purple is the reverse trigger wire. And so when that powers up, that sends a signal. And so you'll get the video signal from your camera. And then your, your yellow RCA goes into there. You splice the purple reverse wire into your red trigger wire there. And then on this stereo, you may or may not have a setting to turn on your camera. Uh, I didn't know that right away, so it took a little while to figure that out. And then you put it in reverse and see if it works. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Good luck on your next Homer Automotive project, and thanks for watching.